Are you looking for that special St. Patrick's Day quilt block? Stick around. I've got a really good one for you today. Hi, I'm Roberta from Quilt Crafters Corner. Today's block is called Celtic twist and it's a great one for St. Patrick's Day. Lovely green colors and it makes a really interesting unusual pattern. So let's take a look at today's block Celtic twist. So here's the block here and as you can see these are making circles or, or twists. So let's take a look at how we can put this block together. So I have started one here, but let me show you the pieces that I've cut out. So I started with a six and a half inch wide strip of fabric and I, these are three and a half by six and a half. And these are my outside rectangles. Now, for my inside block, this is a three and a half by three and a half inch square. And on my colors that are going to make my circle pattern, there are, these are all two and a half inch wide by five and a half, three and a half, and then two inch squares. So each one of those gets a two by five, a two by three and a half, and three two inch squares. And how these go is these are going to be placed around this center square. And I'm going to show you how to do that so that it all goes on there nice and neat. Okay, so let's start with our center square because the first thing you need to do is in order to get all of these to match and meet correctly, you need to do a partial, what is called a partial seam. And a partial seam is, is you start at one end and you only sew to a certain point. Now I sew about two inches and then it leaves it like that. And in this case, it leaves it open so that, so that when you go to sew these together, it will give you that offset. It's a partial seam here, so at the end you go and you, you fold it like, you put it back into the machine and just finish the seam. And then that way you get this offset type of effect for your center block. Now, for the next ones is these outside corners, and these can be a little tricky. That's why I lay this out so that you can see where these all go. So each one of them, as you can see, they, they, you, you kind of have to match them up so that they will form the pattern. And as I'm placing these, remember to be careful about, if you have a directional fabric, make sure that the direction of the fabric, if it's directional, that's why I chose all non-directional fabrics. Just it makes it so much easier when you are putting these together.
extra one of those. I cut an extra one. Okay, and then last is the two inch squares from your background fabric. And those are just going in the corners. Now, when I take these to the machine, the first thing I do is I'm going to put a pin in everything in the direction that I want the seam. So I'll just take a pin and put it right in there so that I know I want my seam to be along this edge here. And it just makes it easier for me to remember in which, which way am I going and how this is going to be put together. Because sometimes you stack them up, you take them to the machine, and then you've completely forgotten which way is, which way is up. So I will just pop a pin in there and point it towards the direction I want the seam, and then that way I know where my seam goes. And being left-handed, I have a tendency to put everything in from the left, so it just makes it easier to sew for me. So I will take these over to the machine and I'll run a seam on those and sew those. Okay, these are now sewn and I have pressed them to the darker fabric just so that they um, the seam doesn't show. And we got this one up here and we got this one right there. Okay, now the next step what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take these and I'm going to press, sew them together. Once again, same thing, just take a pin and I pin it in the direction that I want this, the, where the seam to go. The other reason why I do this is, is, and I kind of do them in order so I remember which way I'm going, whether it be counterclockwise or clockwise. Just whatever's easiest for you. So I have them in the order that I did them. So now I'll take this to the machine and I will put my that seam in here. Okay, so now I've sewn them and I've pressed to the darker side. And now I just need to put those back where they came from. Okay, so now let's Let's go ahead and get our center square done. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip this over and I'm gonna do the partial seam like I talked about in the beginning. And what I'll do is I'll line up the top corners of my fabric and I'll sew about two inches down to here and stop. Take it out of the machine and then we'll continue to add the uh, additional three strips. Okay, so there's my first st strip, partially sewn. See how it's, it's not sewn here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add my next one right over the top and see how that matches up really nice and just go sew it all the way across. Okay, so there's the next one and we're just gonna finish, we're gonna do this one next same thing, line it up, so all the way from top to bottom. And now I will do my last one. When I do my last one, what I'll do is I'll take this one and just pull it out of the way, and then take this one and just put it right over the top, and then sew here. Okay, so there's my last one sewn on. So what I need to do now is I need to just fold this over very gently, line this up, and continue that seam that I started before. And I usually go a half, a quarter to a half inch on my original stitching and start there and then sew all the way down. 
Okay, so there's my center square. As you can see, it's all offset and it was done with a partial seam. The other thing I wanna show you is the back. Look at how I pressed to the darker color and away from my center square. And I did this so that it, my seams don't show on my center square. So here is the center done and I have all of my four corners done. So now all we need to do is our rectangles. So what I need to do here is flip them over so that the wrong side is up. And with my air erase pen and the ruler, I'm going to draw a diagonal line from point to point. And this is going to be my stitching line. This is where I'm going to stitch on the machine. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pin these in place and I'm going to do that so that I don't lose them. So I don't forget where they belong because sometimes if you take them over to the machine, one falls off and then you're going, uh-oh. So I try to keep them in place and I will do all four of them at once because I like the fact that you can, you can chain piece this. This is a very easy thing to do as long as you pin these in place so that they're not gonna go anywhere or fall off. And I'm just lining this up from point to point and then running a line there and then popping a pin on each one so that they're in place and they won't go anywhere. And once again, I'm going to put the lay these in the order that I've taken them from and then that way they they won't get out of order. I try to make sure that they're lined up so that you've got a nice square so that when you go to sew these that it when you cut sew this and cut this part off you've got a nice square part. Okay, and the last one. Okay, I'll take these to the machine and I will sew all those corners on. Okay, I have sewn both corners on and what I'll do is I'll take the pins out. Now I have taken this and I have set my seams. I've pressed them with the iron to set my seams. Okay, so there are my four things, my four rectangles that belong in here. And what I need to do now is I need to trim off this outside. You can leave it on. I like to trim it off only because then it just reduces the bulk at the back of your block. So I will trim all of these off.
Okay, now that I've trimmed all those off, I'm going to take them to the iron and I'm going to press them out. Okay, so here are my rectangles and they're just going to be here. They're going to be placed here and here. here and here. Okay, so now all I need to do is I need to put my pieces together. And once again, just as I normally do, I'll just place them right on top of and take this to the machine and sew it. Okay, so I've pressed my uh, top, my top and bottom to the outside and I've pressed my middle to the inside. That way when I go to put these on this, my seams will nest. So now let's put the other side on. And I'll take those to the machine and sew them. Okay, so the last thing I need to do now is I need to attach my top and bottom. And now that I've got my, um, oops, press that one the wrong way. I need to repress that one. My, I've pressed in the opposite direction, so my seams will nest now. So I will nest those and then I will nest these. And it just makes it a much nicer fit for your block. So let me sew those. So there's, there's the block and it's called Celtic Twist and it's a McCall's quilting pattern. It's a free pattern. I will put the link in the bottom of the uh, description for you so that you can go and find this pattern and make it yourself. It's a simple, easy pattern. The only thing is, is remember how to offset a partial seam for your center block and make sure that you get those corners lined up so that they all match the pattern. So that's today's block. I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank you for all of your comments. Please subscribe and please join my uh, Facebook group, Quilter Swarm. We, it's a group of like-minded quilters that we do some really fun things there and everybody can share their work and show us what you're working on. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.